Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Untitled Reviews. Now, if you ask anybody uh, within the gaming space what switches that they've got inside their keyboard, the odds on is the fact they'll say that they've got cherry ones. Most notably their infamous MX line that has adorned both their own keyboards and indeed other manufacturers like Corsairs for the best part of four decades. If you ask somebody whether cherry makes gaming grade mice though, you'll get a different answer. Cherry make gaming mice now? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, they do. The MC9620 FPS that you can see on your screen here, as the name suggests, is one of the German manufacturer's first real entries into this particular space, with a 12,000 DPI sensor, additional weights, and in a uh, decent design all in all, putting this thing in good stead, certainly from the outset you'd expect. There is one thing to note, though. By comparison to what is available on the market at the moment from competitors like Razer or Asus, and you'll see we've featured all sorts of their mice on the channel before, the MC9620 may seem to be a little bit overpriced. Even then, China, those people in China won't be too uh, unfamiliar uh, with this particular mouse, but it's only now that it's officially making the move into the European market. Inside the box, Cherry have also decided to keep things rather simple indeed. You get the MC9620 FPS itself and an instruction manual. That's literally it. Now, as somebody who has never necessarily always been a fan of the usual gaming mouse design tropes of the sharp edges and random indentations for the sake of aesthetic, I'm pleased to say that Cherry's MC9620 FPS does at least offer something that little bit different. Now, first of all, it's a rather comfortable mouse to hold, and the fact there's this five-stage uh, adjustable palm rest on the back that you'll see I've got a few notches back uh, does mean that it's an ideal mouse for pretty much all grips and all hands by the looks of things. I've tended to have mine probably at the current rate that it is now, a couple of notches back during daily use, uh, just because it suits my grip, but the others should actually work for you. But despite this kind of rather long length of this particular mouse, it isn't necessarily the widest as you can see, and can, uh, in comparison to, say, the contoured shapes of a Razer Basilisk, feel a little bit narrow and probably a smidgen flat for me, uh, or indeed the smooth curves of a Razer Death Adder, which is always uh, the gaming veteran uh, that has been my traditional go-to within this particular sphere. However, where the MC9620 does, certainly in my view, win against all those is in the generic general overall design. While yes, there are some hard edges and it's made of the usual black mean looking plastics, the MC9620 FPS uh, opts for something a little bit, uh, little bit more open uh, and skeletal in a rather similar vein uh, to a lot of the open housed gaming keyboards uh, from Corsair and indeed others. Uh, a lot of those keyboards have certainly been going probably for the last five or six years into that more open housed design so you can see everything living breathing working mad cats have been doing it for absolutely years and so it's nice to see cherry taking a leaf um, out of their book with the design of the mc9620 fps uh, in comparison to other gaming grade mice though uh, the mc9620 MC isn't half heavy without the three weights uh, that it comes with which you can find um, Within the mouse itself, uh, it'll set your hands back 130 grams, which does make the Rog Gladius 3 from Azus, or the current esports king in my opinion, Razer's Viper 8K, feel like feathers. Now for me though, this isn't actually a big issue because I quite like a weighty mouse. But when there's esports ready competitors that weigh absolutely half, then you do have to start asking a couple of questions. But one thing that the MC9620 does miss out on, though, is any form of rubberized grips on the side. It is entirely made of plastic, which does mean that, you know, it may not be the most comfortable mouse to use for a long period of time. Sure, the adjustable palm rest that it features is a great start, but including a different material like rubber on the sides, for example, does not only break the design up uh, a little bit, uh, but can also make this mouse as ergonomic as the data sheet says it is. But... Then again, on the other side, even with the, all the weight and heft behind it, uh, 145 grams with all the weights included, by the way, it's still a mouse that can actually glide relatively well, thanks to the uh, included Teflon glide pads uh, on the bottom there and the MC9620's uh, two meter long cable, which you can see is nicely braided uh, and comes out to a gold ended USB-A connector. It uh, does mean that it can glide uh, and provide and has ample length for even the biggest of desks. So, on to the front of performance then. How does the MC9620 FPS 
perform. <laughs> well, just before we get into that, I do want to say about the weights. I did mention them or allude to them uh, in the design section. Uh, you can see there's three of them. They're three five gram weights that you can get by turning over the mouse and taking off this particularly silver bit. It's relatively easy to do, although not with one hand. There we go. So you can see that they all fit uh, in there and so I should just be able to pop them. They are magnetic, of course, but you can literally just pop them in like so. I can do that. And uh, put the top on. And uh, there you are. That's how you take the weights in and out of the uh, MC9620 FPS. Doing it one, with one hand is a little bit difficult, but uh, you can do it and it's relatively easy. But anyway, performance. Usually a good gaming mouse uh, can be gauged by the combo of high sensitivity and low weight. Almost in a similar vein to a supercar's power to weight ratio. So, for instance, the reason why that Asus's ROG Gladius 3 is such a great eSports mouse is because it's got a 19,000 DPI sensor into a 79 gram shell, for instance. Now, with the MC9620, its combo of a 12,000 DPI uh, sensor and 130 gram weight without those three 5 gram uh, masses in them does put it on par with, say, the flagship mice of five years ago. Think of one of the earlier versions of Logitech's G502 Heroes that, for a time, was the most powerful mouse in the world with a 12,000 DPI sensor. It's still a perfectly good gaming mouse in my usual testing fields of the CSGO training course uh, and actually a few actual rounds, although with bot, may I say, uh, but may not feel slightly as responsive uh, as the competition. Of course, in the grand scheme of things, actually a drop of 7,000 DPI once you get up to those dizzy heights of 12,000 isn't actually that much to most people, uh, apart from those professional gamers, and for me, actually worth um, works pretty well. Truth be told, actually, I've been using the MC9620 FPS for a good while and haven't actually once felt a competitive disadvantage while using it on the 12,000 DPI setting. But then again, uh, most of that is probably down to the fact that I'm terrible at most shooters anyway. <laughs> For the more seasoned players out there, you'll be pleased to know uh, that the MC9620 does come with a handy dandy DPI clutch. That's uh, this button that I'm pushing down here right next to the forwards and backwards buttons. Uh, this allows for more precise aiming, which can be quite helpful for, uh, say, if you're sniping, for instance. Uh, this is particularly of major use in a game like Sniper Elite 4, for example, where wind distance and bullet drop are simulated well. So lining that perfect shot up is ideal. And so for the MC9620 FPS to have one does at least give it some form of esports credentials. Moreover, a wired connection also means there's absolutely zero latency to speak of. Uh, uh, although in, in future, a wireless version wouldn't actually go amiss. A lot of wireless gaming mice in 2020 are offering a practical zero latency connection thanks to one millisecond response times. Uh, think of Corsair's, uh, Corsair's own and Razer's hyperspeed, for example. And to be honest, in the modern age, there's not actually much to pick from. So if there was a wireless version of the MC9620 FPS, you could argue that they'd sell by the absolute bucket load. So, on to the point of out-of-the-box lighting. Well, it's probably a roughly similar side of the story when we get to the lighting side. Uh, with the out-of-the-box uh, RGB set, perhaps uh, to some people may be feeling a little bit lacklustre and a smidgen dim when compared to, say, Razer Chroma and uh, a Zeus ROG or a Sync and the way that their lighting uh, is portrayed. It, as you can see, it's uh, cycling through all sorts of colours. Uh, if it is kind of strobe and a little bit flashy, rest assured, that's not the lighting uh, of the mouse itself. That's just the way the camera is detecting it when we've got two stonkingly great studio lights uh, either side of the table that we film on. Uh, lighting, actually, there's a couple of different zones. So you've got the tiny little cherry logo there, and the, uh, the scroll wheel itself uh, is also illuminated, if you can make that out. But there is also one other rather intriguing zone present uh, on the MC9620 FPS. If you look closely, I'm just going to try and zoom the camera in so you can see this. There is a uh, an illuminated cherry logo. So yes, I do appreciate that it's flickering, but fundamentally, um, if you look at the pictures uh, for the MC9620 FPS review on the uh, Untitled website, which I'll uh, leave a link to uh, down in the description, uh, you'll see that there is a nice little uh, illuminated cherry logo, uh, which is quite an intriguing thing to see. I've never ever seen uh, any other manufacturer illuminate their own logo on the back end of a mouse before. And actually, I have to say, I'm quite taken to it. And it's certainly well looks the part uh now uh, onto the points about software i will of course be going into the things about cherry utility um uh, in the next bit but 
uh, on the whole, uh, it's a, a decent piece of software. There's some good customization options with four lighting presets, as you'll see. Uh, other than that, you can fiddle the DPI uh, five ways, I believe, and add some onboard profiles. But unfortunately, I couldn't get Cherry Assistant to work, uh, as it didn't want to recognize the MC9620. But on the whole, though, decent software, uh, relatively good lighting. Uh, just be wary that it can be a little dim at times. So here is uh, Cherry Utility, the bundled software for any of Cherry's gaming peripherals, uh, indeed, including the MC9620 FPS. Well, when you first open the software, you're greeted uh, with this specific screen, and this is pretty much all there really is to it. You get a nice uh, couple of pictures of the mouse, uh, certainly from the left hand side or the top this is what we're uh, we're certainly dealing with it's a very simple and very easy to understand and you could argue relatively intuitive uh, interface so we're going to have a look at lighting uh, specifically so let's say we wanted to add a profile this is what you're currently greeted with say a red static one or if you wanted it to kind of randomly alternate between static colors uh, then away you go if you wanted it to be a gradient for instance between say red and green uh, you can kind of drag that to suit whichever one you want uh, you can also have it pulse uh, between between, say this preset of red green and blue so it'll just go between them in quite a quite a erratic fashion i suppose depending upon uh, how you set it there is certainly a speed thing uh, and you can indeed reverse it as well there's also a visor uh, one here i'm not actually too sure what this particular one does so you, but you can increase the width and speed of it as well and pretty much that's probably very similar to a pulsing type thing you can have all sorts of onboard profiles so we'll just set it back to default for instance uh, and say you want to turn the lighting on and off there's a little eye icon there there's also a nice light pre function, so you can see between all the sort of lighting presets you've created, whether they've gone under simple or complex. Uh, on the right hand side, there's a thing here for devices, so if you've got any more uh, connected, then away you go. Uh, also with DPIs, it's five uh, changeable between 800, 600, 24, 48, uh, and 12,000, and you just select them by clicking uh, in between them. Uh, like so, it's a very simple process. Uh, and of course, if you wanted to change it, you just slide the slider up and down uh, it's those two particular buttons on the top of the mouse to fiddle with the dpi uh, as well so if you want to fiddle with them outside of software then you can as well beyond that um, cherry utility doesn't necessarily offer the same level of customization as say razor synapse does so if you're looking for a little bit more deep customization you're probably better off purchasing a razor mouse and doing it like so but if you just want the basics done uh, in a relatively well fashion then this is a pretty decent option so in conclusion then, is Cherry's MC9620 FPS worth a pickup? Well, if you're somebody who wants a mouse that doesn't necessarily look the same as the standard gaming fare on offer uh, in the modern age with some rather interesting lighting, the MC9620 FPS isn't necessarily a bad option by any means. Its 12,000 DPI sensor is plenty for the average gamer, uh, and I include myself in that as well, and the fact it comes with additional weights as well is a nice feature. So again, if you're somebody that likes a little bit of physical customization, uh, then you won't go wrong here. It's also true if you're somebody that wants a mouse that looks that little bit different, uh, so you want to go a little bit left field that way, then this offers uh, and will cater for you. However, if you're somebody who uh, yearns for extra sensitivity beyond 12,000, something a little bit lighter and maybe uh, with a more conventional design or indeed something wireless, then you're probably better off sticking with the usual suspects on the point of manufacturers, your Razors, your Corsairs, your uh, uh, Azuses, and so on. Uh, and, you know, in a word, in a line perhaps, the MC9620 FPS is a good mouse, but it may not be the earth-shatteringly incredible one that you're so desperate to find. That, uh, for wired for me, goes for Razer's Viper 8K, and for wireless is again uh, Razer's Death Adder V2 Pro. But nonetheless, the MC9620 FPS is still a good mouse regardless. Now, all that really remains to be said is that uh, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and to, of course, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. To follow us on Twitter and, of course, Instagram, links should be appearing on the screen right about now. And also... Uh, in the uh, lurking in the description somewhere there should be a link to the untitled spring store so if you want to rep the brand uh, with all manner of t-shirts hoodies long sleeve t-shirts sweatshirts pint glasses now uh, and some metal 
kind of sealed water bottles as well and all sorts of other stuff uh, then you can there'll be a link to that down in the description uh, they ship worldwide and the quality is indeed marvelous so uh, get on that down in the description if you want to of course rep the brand uh, and of course to uh, well if you like any of the kit we feature within these videos be it this uh, mc uh, 9620 fps and the myriads of other gaming grade keyboards mice uh, multimedia controllers microphones uh, headsets uh, and all sorts of other things like that then there should be amazon links down in the description of every video uh, not just this one of course and all the others where you can of course pick that kit up if you so wish and uh, well all that really left to be said is uh, thank you very much for watching.